Julian Assange is not going to be extradited to the United States of America, people. That was huge news. Huge fucking news. CNN should have been reporting the shit out of it. MS, nobody. Not, none of the fucking corporate media talked about this. Big fucking news. The UK judge said that Julian Assange will not be extradited to the United States because if he's extradited to the United States... Under the Espionage Act, he would be in prison for 175 years. And if he goes to prison, the American prison systems are so fucking terrible that it might cause him to commit suicide. And because of that reason, she said that she can't uh, extradite him to the United States. Now, this is a huge win for Julian Assange, but everything else surrounding this uh, this decision is utter horseshit. Utter nonsensical fucking trash horseshit. <laughs> two days later when the decision to grant him bail and get him out of Belmarsh prison when that decision came up she was like nah I'm gonna keep him there <laughs> wait what didn't you just say keeping him in in a, a a prison with abhorrent, horrid conditions that are that violate human rights is detrimental to his mental health? And then two days later, you're like, yeah, don't worry about any of that. That's in America. In the UK, we have a different system. Do you, though? <laughs> Belmarsh is riddled with COVID. Some of the most of the guards caught it. There's nobody wearing masks. He's he's kept in cold conditions. He has to use books to warm himself. He hasn't seen Horizon in, in years. He's tried to commit suicide in there. But yeah, that's different. That's different, right? Oh, is it because you guys say please before you emotionally and mentally torture this man? You guys use that that British, the British politeness. You're like, hello, yes, of course. Uh, we think that you are a pile of human trash that doesn't deserve any sort of dignity. But if you could please emotionally deteriorate, that would be wonderful for us to watch. That is how I uh, imagine them sounding in my head. The Assange's... <laughs> Assange's lawyers basically came back and said he's not a flight risk anymore because there's no case of extradition. And he can go home and get treatment for his mental health issues and some of his physical issues. And she's like, no, 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 no. Uh, he could still run. If he has an ankle monitor, he could hack into it and, and then Russia juice will be spread all across the all across the country of UK. Think of the children. Do you want the children to transform into tiny potents? That's that's not exactly obviously that's a if anybody believes that to be true, my God, I don't know what to tell you. The McCarthyism is strong within you. But it's ridiculous. What a ridiculous thing to say, right? You you claim that he can't be extradited because of a a a volatile and abusive criminal justice system, which, by the way, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris helped create. And then you go around two days later and basically say he needs to stay in a violent and abusive criminal justice. Not only that, though, but she validated all of the CIA talking points when she gave him the extradition decision. When she put out her extradition decision, she validated the CIA, right? She was just like, oh, yeah, whatever. What the CIA said was right. And she and she quotes a CNN article, the one CNN article that they wrote about Julian Assange in 10 years. She quotes that. And. <laughs> and basically says that what he did was not correct, right? Uh, because he revealed the crimes of the elites, because he revealed the crimes of the oligarchs and American war crimes, uh, what he did was was not good. Uh, what he did was illegal. Because oh, but oh, but the rich politicians are sad. You made rich politicians sad. You should be you you should be in prison for that. And I mean, it basically openly and blatantly admitted that's that's the crime that he committed. The crime that he committed was that he went up against the oligarchs. He revealed their crimes, and that was the issue. 
So if you're rich and powerful and you do some fucked up shit and a bunch of people reveal that you did some fucked up shit, you're the criminal. He should be he should be released. There's no there's no and in Belmarsh too. The reason why he was in Belmarsh was um the the Sweden case, right? That was Opened and closed and opened and closed and opened and closed. Kevin Gastola, who uh, who was on my podcast yesterday, basically talked about how that was a uh, that should have pissed off everybody in the Me, Me Too movement is like there was no real investigation to it. It was open and closed, open and closed. And they kept saying there's not enough evidence for, for us to go upon this. And they used that as him saying that they were skipping bail. Yeah. Skipping bail involves you going to a maximum security prison. Right. And after you've served your term for skipping bail, you still need to continue to be in that maximum security prison. Yeah, I'm sure that's fair. And then she goes on to say that he would have gotten a fair trial in the United States. <laughs> what? Where? When? No whistleblower or anyone that has talked about American war crimes has gotten a fair trial in the United States. This is not a country that likes fair trials. If Julian Assange was released and put under house arrest, I don't think he would have been doing a whole lot of journalism and publishing. Uh, WikiLeaks would operate as is, right? As it's been operating the the way that WikiLeaks operates by revealing uh, revealing things that need to be revealed. I think what would have probably happened is that Julian would have gone home to see his fiance and kids, and then focused on mental health. He has been tortured for the better part of a decade. And the primary focus for him would probably be to get his mental health in order so he can be a good father to his kids and be a good husband to his soon-to-be wife, hopefully soon-to-be wife. Dude, if I went through that much fucking trauma, you best believe my my first goal out of prison wouldn't be to do a fucking live stream. As much as I love you guys watching this thing, I would be like, I got to fucking chill out, guys. I got to take a moment to get my head right. The level of trauma and torture this man has gone through in the for, for the better part of a decade, I don't think a lot of people have gone through. There's probably a very small amount of people that have gone through the amount of torment that he's gone through. And that's not me being, you know, dramatic or anything. No, N Niels Melzer, the UN rapporteur on torture, has said this. He was tortured. At the behest of the United States. He was spied on at the behest of the CIA by UC Global. Which really just, I mean, you know, it's like they're watching him poop and masturbate. Which really just makes them all peeping toms with a security clearance. That's all. That's all. That's all we proved about the CIA. What this UK judge said by citing that CNN article, which I have debunked, uh, and several other people have debunked, to be mostly bullshit. There might be maybe one point that's actually real. Um, this is dangerous to press freedoms. Basically, she came out and said that if you report about the crimes of the oligarchs, about the crimes of the rich and powerful, then we will come after you and we have every legal reason to do so. And we will imprison the shit out of you. We'll torture the shit. Even if you're proven to be innocent, even if even if it, it means that people have to be tried for war crimes, we will torture the fuck out of you. Very dangerous to press freedoms. That is the point of journalism. America talks about checks and balances all the time, right? That's a big thing, checks and balances. Well, journalists are in place to put a check on the powerful, to make sure that they operate within the laws that they claim that we all need to operate under. 
America has committed a lot of war crimes. The CIA has illegally spied on its people. The NSA did the same thing. A federal judge actually said what Edward Snowden did was not traitorous. He should be regarded as a hero. But he's still exiled, thanks to the Obama administration, thanks to Joe Biden, by the way. They knew he would have to go through Moscow, and the second he landed there, they canceled his passport, straining him there. There's a second part to what I want to talk about, but I see a few comments I would like to read. Uh, Dutch, thank you for watching. They uh, they would have released him on bail. He would no longer be protected under the EU law since uh, since the Brexit, and he could be worse after that. And Hacker Love was going under the same situations. Okay. Uh, Hacker Lowry Love was to be extradited to the United States, but because of mental health issues, extradition was denied, and Lowry Love successfully won appeal, uh, won the USA appeal. Okay, I did not... Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, Kevin Kevin Gasola did mention that, but I, I wasn't sure about the details. Um, he won't be judged over his action in one way, better on the other side. Too bad for journal. Uh, too bad for journalism, but that case itself would take longer. So he would be in jail for who knows how how who knows years. Um, yeah, I just think that there's no reason for him to be in jail, considering the fact that he served his time for what they put him in prison for. Uh, I think he could very easily be at house arrest and and not be put under the the mental health stress that he's being put under. Um. That's that's my point to it is I don't think he needs to continue being in prison anymore. Uh, but there is something kind of exciting that has happened. Uh, and that is uh, what I'm going to pull up here in a sec. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Where are we at? There we go. Mexico offers asylum to Julian Assange, uh, a step forward for government accountability and press freedom. Now, uh, AMLO, uh, the Mexican president, uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO is what he would people call him by. Um, my understanding, and, and I'm again, I'm not hyper familiar with him, I haven't done my deep dive research, but this article from Counterpunch is actually pretty great and, and talks a lot about uh, what it is, right? So AMLO, um, I think is trying to get rid of corruption in Mexico. And there have been a lot of journalists from the previous president that have been killed. And, uh, like right here, it says the announcement made by, uh, Luis Obrador regarding journalist Julian Assange unleashes a series of reactions regarding, uh, freedom of expression and contradictory, uh, policies of the current Mexican administration. On one hand, the president has indicated that his administration backs freedom of press. Out of conviction, we never, ever would limit his freedom of expression, none of his freedoms. He also said, it fills me with pride that freedom of expression is guaranteed. Uh, this hadn't happened in a long time. The media, the press were either sold or rented to the regime. This is new, something to celebrate. However, the opposition, human rights advocates uh, and concerned journalists highlight that there is still a pending doubt with reporters in Mexico because during the first two years of AMLO as president, 17 journalists have been, have been assassinated according to the organization Article 19. The Mexican government recognizes even a higher number. The Ministry of Interior has announced that 38 communicators have been murdered from December 2018 to December 2020. This indicates that there are high levels of impunity in this type of crime since currently only two cases have resulted in convictions that remain under investigation and 13 are in litigation. To be noted that violence against journalists didn't begin with AMLO's administration. During the Enrique Peña Nato, 47 journalists were assassinated while under Felipe Cal Calderon, 48 and Mexico, one of the most dangerous countries to practice journalism. So, um, yeah. Mexico has been a very dangerous country to be a journalist, uh, but it's not what AMLO wants to do. I think what AMLO is trying to do is, I believe, very similar to what Rafael Correa did with um, with Julian Assange. Uh, journalists were being killed in Mexico uh, from the previous administration. I think AMLO is trying to turn 
um, turn that around. Correa tried to do the same thing, but Correa did it through his own means, right? Correa was against indigenous people and basically said that they can't protest uh, and would lock up anybody that kind of spoke out against that, including journalists. So he basically, by granting Julian Assange asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, was showing that he could po he was possibly an ally to journalists and to freedom of press and to freedom of speech itself. I think AMLO's probably doing the same thing here, right? Is um, he is trying to show that he is on the side of journalists and is cracking down on the the murder of journalists within his own country. Uh, we'll see what happens. I honestly don't know what is going to happen with with this situation in Mexico. Uh, it it could it could bode well. It could dynamically shift the way that. Um, freedom of press has been looked at in Mexico. Uh, it could dynamically shift the relationship between the United States and Mexico. Um, remember, Lenin Moreno, the reason why uh, he turned so quickly is because the United States basically was going to give him financial aid. The, the, the day that uh, Julian Assange was literally dragged out of the embassy in April of 2019, um, nearly two years ago. The day after, the IMF approved a $4 billion loan to Ecuador. Literally sold out Julian Assange. The danger would be that AMLO, if, if this gets accepted, AMLO would then um, possibly be in danger of a coup within his own country. That the CIA, who particularly the CIA specifically, fucking hates Julian Assange. They might, they might try to run a coup. But would it? Would it? I don't know what the difficulties of that would be for them. But I, I wouldn't doubt that they wouldn't try it. They, they might even give them the Venezuela treatment, slap a bunch of economic sanctions on them, and things of that sort. Right. The the second that this story came out that Mexico was offering asylum to Julian Assange, I, I saw a bunch of neoliberal headlines saying that the most dangerous country for journalists, uh, you know, something along the lines of like offers asylum to the most dangerous person or something like that. Basically, an entire article that was trashing both Julian Assange and what AMLO was trying to do. Uh, again, I'm not hyper familiar with Mexico's history. I just think this is a cool thing that's happening that another country is stepping up to say, okay, we have problems with our press, but we're willing to recognize this person's freedom of press and, and maybe use this as an olive branch, um, to the, to the press community out there. To say that we're going to do everything we can to see journalists not get killed. I don't know. Um, it's an interesting development for sure. And if this thing goes through, I, I think that <laughs> I think the United States will be fucking pissed, but you know, I don't know what's going to happen with this. Regardless if Julian stays in Belmarsh, his mental health is going to deteriorate even further than it is now. I don't know how the how the UN hasn't called the fact that what's going on in Belmarsh with Julian Assange is acts of torture. It's ridiculous that there are people still out there that are anti-Assange. Um, I don't know what the appeal is going to be. Like, how are you going to prove that his mental health, he, he won't be suicidal when he's put into an American prison system? I don't think the United States really has a. I don't think they had a case, and I definitely don't fucking think that they have a case. Let's look at some comments. Uh, they would they would smuggle him in the USA for a good amount of money. Oh, you, are you talking about Mexico would smuggle him into the United States for a good amount of money? Uh, I'm not sure who what that is in reference to. Uh, slow news day. Good to see you, Steve. Uh, I have significant information on the issues, the AMLO thing specifically. Oh, well, we should we should talk soon. Uh, AMLO granted asylum to a targeted member of Anonymous in 2019. Okay, so it seemed, okay, with, with that, so it does seem like they're trying to, he's trying to fix what's going on with journalism in this country. 
uh, Dutch are saying, yes, Mexico would, would do that. Uh, judge ruled against its own verdict of the denial of extradition, but keep him in jail. Yeah, I think it's a hypocritical decision on the judge's part. It's a, it's monumentally hypocritical on the judge's part. Uh, Steve, we should talk. Steve is uh, has Action Channel, Slow News Day, uh, and Action for Assange. Um, you guys should definitely go check them out if you haven't already. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.